G'day folks, Ren here, and today I want to tell you about all of the books I DNF'd in 2023. I am very much someone who is like a big advocate for DNFing books. I didn't really realise how much I DNFed until I made this list, because it's a lot. Let's go through all of the books I DNFed in 2023. I have separated this out by month because that is how I track my reading anyways, so we're gonna go through each month. So starting with January. So in January I had three DNFs, starting the year strong. So the first DNF I had was Lifelike by Jay Kristoff. This was like my th third attempt at a Jay Kristoff. I did not like Illuminae. I love the Aurora Cycles that he did with Amy Corfin. I love those. I previously DNF'd Nevernight. Lifelike was like my last ditch effort at trying Jay Kristoff. So I, I'm pretty sure I only read like the first chapter. I don't know what it was about, but I, I just didn't like it. Really didn't like it. I'm going to assume it was Jay Kristoff being kind of creepy about a teenage girl again, because that seems to be consistent and it's gross. So I DNF'd that one and I am no longer going to be trying to read any Jay Kristoff. Any of his other books that I did own, I've unhauled because yikes. Then I had Maphead. This was a middle grade sci-fi book and I was really, really excited for it because like aliens coming to earth, I love that. But this was weirdly written and like not in a good way. It was very kind of confusing. And I remember the moment I DNF'd because this scene is stuck in my head for all eternity because the alien creature eats cats and it was a little graphic. I was like, this is for children. Do not get children to read this. It was yikes. And like, I'm a horror person. I love horror, but like, don't be killing animals. Then I had Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. I was so hyped to read this. I've wanted to read it forever because Scotland and you know so many people love it and I was like okay I'll give it a go and I read like I think like a hundred pages and I was like it's good but every time I put it down I did not want to pick it back up like at all and I don't really know why. I then went and watched the TV show and I think I got like six episodes in and I was like again it's good but when I stopped watching I didn't want to keep watching you know it just something about all this wasn't holding my interest so that was a kind of sad DNF but a DNF nonetheless. Then in February I had another three DNFs so the first one was Rosaline Palmer Takes the Cake by Alexis Hall, which is very sad for me because Alexis Hall has written one of my favourite books of all time, which is Boyfriend Material. So the fact that I DNF'd Rosaline Palmer is, oh, it does kind of hurt, but oh boy, I couldn't do it. I did not get very far into this, like maybe 50 pages. I remember thinking that it was trying so hard to be funny. And I really didn't enjoy that, like, at all. Because, I don't know, the humour and boyfriend material, it felt easy. The humour in Rosaline Palmer felt very trying. And then I'm pretty sure there was an aspect of lying in this that I didn't like, because it was like a big plot point, and that I hate. If the whole book, and like the whole big drama of the book is about one character lying, and then having to like cover up those lies. I could not care less. So that's what happened here, unfortunately. Next we have Royally Endowed by Emma Chase, maybe? This is the third in the Royally series. When I read the first book, I really enjoyed it. I had such a fun time. Then I read the second book and I was like, eh, okay. And then this third one, could not do it. Oh boy, could not do it. Mainly because there was an age gap that potentially started at an uncomfortable time. And then it was like a second chance thing with these characters, like, oh, when they're like actual adults, or when one of them is an actual adult, then they start 
trying to get together again and it was just oh, the way he was describing her and I'm like she was 16 at that time you were in your 20s it wasn't good it made me really uncomfortable so I DNF'd that and I think I'm calling it quits for that series because even though there's only like one more book I was like I think I'm done I think the first book was good the rest of them not so much then we have Finding Audrey this was a book that I wanted to read for years. I kept having it on my shelf and I kept almost unhauling it for years because I'm like, oh, clearly I'm never gonna read it. And then I would read the synopsis and I'm like, damn, that sounds like it could be good because it was about like someone with, I think it was meant to be like agoraphobia so they couldn't leave the house. And I was like, I have had that as part of my PTSD, I had that. And it was awful. From the synopsis, from the cover, from everything I'd heard about it, I was expecting an adult book. This was YA. I was so confused and I think my brain just couldn't get over that. It was written very YA. If you know, you know, you know. Then for March I had two DNFs. I would like to say both of these are kind of soft DNFs, but in the way that I have no intention of going back to them for the next two years. <laughs> so the first one was Little Women. I don't know if it was just I couldn't read this at the time, but I was like, I don't care. And I honestly don't remember anything about what I did read. I don't remember how far into it I got. I just remember not caring. Then the other one in March that I DNF'd was The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, maybe? I wanted to read this because everyone told me to read it because it's a sci-fi that has like a non-binary race in it. And I was like, awesome, that sounds really cool. I could not understand this. I remember I read that first chapter three times because I could not understand anything that was happening. And honestly, I'm not sure if it was my brain at the time because I was getting into a moment of my time when my health was really bad. So looking back on it, maybe it was the way my brain was acting at that time that led to me not being able to understand it. So I do kind of want to try it again just to see if it was my health that made me not be able to do this. Otherwise I'm just not intelligent enough to understand it and that's fine. Which we'll talk about now because we're getting into April books. So in April of 2023 I had some hemiplegic migraines I have suffered with migraines my whole life. I have never had hemiplegic migraines and they scared the living daylights out of me. I lost all feeling in half of my body. And this happened several times and it was absolutely terrifying because I also could not comprehend words. I, I couldn't really speak sentences. I would read one sentence and have to read it 50 times and still not understand what that sentence meant. Even if the sentence was the most simple thing in the world, it was absolutely terrifying. One of the things I do when I have a migraine is I, I close all my curtains, I make everything dark, I have some medication, I lie down and I put on a audiobook because I need something to distract my brain from all of the pain that it's feeling. So I listened to audiobooks and that's what I tried to do in April, but that didn't work because I couldn't understand what the audiobook was saying. Like I slowed it all the way down to normal speed, which I usually listen at two times speed. I was listening to this at normal speed and I could not understand it. I have a lot of trauma from that. And so there were some books that I was reading during this time that I had to DNF purely because I couldn't understand it. The first one I had to DNF in April because of this was Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. This is one I have wanted to read for years because it's a middle grade horror and it's a very beloved middle grade horror. I was so excited for it and I got 25% of the way through and I had not understood a single word and I had to go back several times I kept like going back really trying to focus on what the words were saying and I couldn't do it so that was the book where I started to freak out because I was like oh my god I can't understand words it was very scary for me so I had to DNF and I have not been able to go back to that book since even though I do want to because I know how beloved it is and I still want to give it a go 
but I still have a bit of trauma around that. The next one I DNF'd during this time was Such Small Flowers. Honestly, I don't remember anything about this, except for the fact that I think it was just too YA for me, in that kind of annoying YA. Like, this was a very rough time for me. I think when I started to listen to this, I was kind of coming out of my hemiplegic migraine, like, cluster, but I still wasn't 100%. It took a long time for my brain to really kind of get back online and process things as it normally would. So I think I was still in the stage of, I don't understand words properly, but it was still, like, this is still not a book I want to revisit. I think this was very much a combination of me and the book. We just didn't get along. Then the last one in April that I DNF'd was Helena. This is a really short, kind of horror gothic book. I'm not really sure what to kind of call it. I was reading this physically and I was reading it very, very slowly. I think I got like halfway and then I'm like, I don't care. I. I remember there was like some vague intrigue, but, but like I still wasn't understanding what was happening. I think it was a combination of me coming out of the hemiplegic migraine and the book just not working for me because yes, I wasn't understanding what was happening, but I think only part of that was because of the hemiplegic migraine and some of it was just the way the book was written. Then in May, I only had one DNF, which was very surprising actually, and that was Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. And like, I got a good chunk of the way through this. I think I was getting to like the 60% mark. I knew going into this that it was a wild time and it was like a full on like satire. This book was making fun of absolutely everything. And some of it was like, huh, funny. Some of it was like, okay, you're trying really hard to do something here. Like Libra Bray was making some good commentary on some things, but it was just, it was drowned out by all of like the humor. And I put humour in quotation marks because it was trying a bit too hard. In June, I had two DNFs and one of them, I can't even tell you which book it was because I didn't write it down properly. All I wrote was Ari and Dante. So that could have been Ari and Dante 1 or Ari and Dante 2. I'm not sure, but I DNF'd. I have already read Ari and Dante by Benjamin Alire Sands and I read it years ago and I was like, ooh, I really like this. Um, over the years I don't think I like it as much as I did and I I know I wanted to reread it so that I could read the sequel so I don't know if I tried to reread it in June or if I just went straight to the sequel but either way I DNF'd and I think it is just because of like of the time period that this was set and that particular kind of homophobia that comes with that time period and like, I never fell in love with our two main characters, so I think I was just trying to read it for the sake of it's a kind of beloved queer way duology. The next one was Black Leopard Red Wolf something. The cover, absolutely stunning. And I did want to love this. I did not get very far because I was unaware of the trigger warnings, and I don't know if there were actually trigger warnings mentioned, but I should have tried really hard to figure those out before I started reading it because it is full, and I mean full, in 20 pages, nearly every page was about sexual assault. And it was graphic and constant and so normalized in that culture. And I know it is a thing in certain cultures, it really shouldn't be. Even people in that culture know it shouldn't be, but it still is. And it's just... Oh. Even like thinking about it now is not good. It was really intense. Then in July I had another three DNFs. So the first one was To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. I was really excited for this and I did really want to read it because it was a book that Brittany chose for me to read from Brittany Loves Reading. I remember, I again, I didn't get very far, maybe 50 pages, and all it was about was this woman's grief that like her fiance had died or something during a like space exploration thing. Like that's all she cared about and I was like, I don't care. 
tell me about this like invasion that's happening. Tell me about this world that you were researching. I don't care about your dead boyfriend. Then I have No Exit by Taylor Adams. I think I had a hundred pages left and I was saying to people, I was like, do I keep reading? Do I just stop? And a lot of people were like, if you're not enjoying it, just stop. So eventually I did. And then they were like, you know, if you're interested, just look up spoilers to see how it ended. So I did and I was like, yeah, I didn't care at all. <laughs> like how that ended, sure, whatever. I was not having a good time reading No Exit at all. So the thing that really got to me with No Exit was that it was so predictable. And I'm so confused <laughs> because a lot of my favorite booktubers that read thrillers, they really love this book. And they say it's one of the best thrillers I've ever read. And I'm like, I was so bored and so annoyed at our main character because things were just obvious and she didn't pick up on anything. The other thing that really, really pissed me off about the main character was that her motivation for trying to save this girl that's been kidnapped wasn't, oh, it's a child, I need to save her. It was, this is gonna be in all the papers. I'm gonna get famous. Then the next one I DNF'd in July was The Night Swim by Megan Golding, I wanna say? I don't think that's right, who knows. I might have gotten halfway, maybe? But I was, this book was making me feel really uncomfortable because again, it was about sexual assault. Like we don't, we hadn't gotten like a vivid description, but it was the reaction of everyone in town to that assault. I wanted to murder everyone in that town because all of them were saying it was the girl's fault. Like, are you kidding me? It was making me so violently uncomfortable that I was constantly asking people, I'm like, should I keep going with this? And people were like, you know, if you're not having a good time, again, DNF it and look up spoilers later. So I did, I decided to DNF it, which was a, a, a reluctant DNF because it was still good. I was just having such a visceral reaction to it. But then I looked up spoilers and I was like, damn, that would have been awesome to read. So I am, I'm a bit upset that I actually DNF'd this because like it was good. And I know Liv from Endless Pages loves this book. And I messaged her after I read the, the spoilers and after I DNF'd it. And I was like, I wish I hadn't done that. And she was like, you shouldn't have. I was like, I'm so sorry. This book would actually have been really good. Then in August, I had another three books I DNF'd. I really have a pattern. So the first one was Solutions and Other Problems. This was a chunky graphic novel. And it was, it was like a bound up edition of this like web comic. This was recommended to me by Mel from a book fiend named Mel. And again, I didn't get too far into this, but it was the humor for me that I didn't connect with because it was, again, it was trying to be funny and there were like snippets of serious things. And I was like, Ooh, that's really good. But then it went back to the funny and it was more funny than trying to be serious or to even use humor to talk about a serious issue. Like it wasn't even doing that sometimes it felt like. I'm sorry, Mel, <laughs> but it just, it didn't work for me. Then I DNF'd Tomoe by Junji Ito. This was kind of a complicated DNF. So the big number one reason I DNF'd this manga was because the edition that I had, which I'm annoyed that I spent actual money on, it was severely misprinted. There would be like chunks of this manga that were just previous parts of the story just printed again. And so the story just, it never flowed properly because of all of those misprints. And it was like my brain could not comprehend what was going on because there was just so many mistakes. And I think also at this point, which was only like my second Junji Ito, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't actually like his art style. Like, I didn't want to continue. Like, a part of the story was kind of interesting, but I was like, I don't think I care. Then the last one I DNF'd in August, controversial for many people, but was The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I, this was the second time I've tried to read this book. <laughs> I, I just don't care. It's just, it's slow. 
I think that's my issue is that it's so slow. But like the writing was good, the storyline could have been interesting, I just didn't care. And I wanted to like it because Max really enjoys this book and a lot of my booktube friends really enjoy this book. But I didn't... I was bored. And it was just slow and I didn't care. Then in September I had one DNF and that was Once There Were Wolves. This was a book I kept going back and forth on if I wanted to read it or not, but I eventually decided to give it a go. Now I picked this up because of wolves. Wolves are my everything, I love them dearly, there are several wolves around my room, I love wolves. So I wanted to give this a go because it was about like a wolf sanctuary or something, so I was like, this sounds amazing. It was the fact that a wolf died, but it was also the way that our main character's sister was portrayed. And I did end up looking up spoilers after I DNF'd this to see how it ended and I'm like, yep, glad I DNF'd because the way that this sister was portrayed, it was so, like, enraging. It was disrespectful. That's the way I'll put it, because this person, she had PTSD after a sexual assault. The way that PTSD was described, it felt like it was written by someone who hasn't had PTSD. She was, like, infantilized. How do you say that? Infantilized? You know, she was treated like an infant. Like, she couldn't do anything. But then it was also the the love story that was in this I was like that doesn't make sense and the main character did not like her at all she had like kind of no redeeming qualities and not in a fun way like I just I didn't like her then in October I had two DNFs first one was wildfire this was a middle grade like survival story which I love survival stories and this was about like two kids that were caught in a forest fire and I don't know this was like a five-star prediction for me and I ended up DNFing it. It wasn't realistic I think it was everything was very convenient and then the next one I DNF'd was Them by McKay I can't remember his last name but McKay he has a booktube channel and this was an extreme horror book and I had a whole vlog planned out for this where I was going to do a reading extreme horror for the first time vlog. Obviously I didn't end up doing that because I ended up DNFing this book. So I got maybe halfway through this and the point that I stopped at was when the dog was murdered and I think that was the extreme horror part of it because it was very visceral the way it was described of, of how this dog was murdered and I was like oh okay like I didn't care the way it was described I think because it was a dog I like dissociated <laughs> because if it had been a human described that way I would have been like yes amazing but because it was an animal I was like nope we're not doing this like it felt oh I hate saying this but it felt cheap like to kill an animal and have that be the shocking thing that felt like cheap and lazy and that sounds awful it really does and I'm so sorry that's just how I was feeling so that is actually the end of my DNFs for 2023 because I didn't have any DNFs in November shocking and in December I'm filming this on the filming this on the 10th of December like I haven't been reading very much in December anyways and the way I'm going I don't think I'm going to be reading much in December anyways so I think I won't have many DNFs because I won't even try and read. So if you think I should have continued with any of these books let me know. Like did I offend anyone? Let me know. But that's going to be it so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!